I'd been alone for three months, and now, now I was really seeing things. Things like the solidarity of the house cats and their hostility towards strays. Ah. Like the accelerated yellowing of the appliances in the kitchen. Sarah had been right. Maybe two months, hard to say. I, I was on my way to her sister's house because that was where she was supposed to be. And I was driving too fast and everyone else was driving too slow. Well, old men in flat caps, <coughs> buses to nowhere, dawdling. I considered recycling a roadside bouquet to make myself look less spontaneous, but the tulips had gone crisp and there was a discoloured teddy bear noosed to the stems that I didn't have time to untie. I took a shortcut through a red light and grazed a lollipop man in a clown costume. Danger. Nothing could stop me. It was like things had been getting clearer and clearer and I just needed something to snap me into action. Now I'd finally snapped. I'd been napping in the afternoon, sleeping off a migraine a dozen paracetamol I hadn't killed, and I'd heard him in the living room. The trespasser. Here for me. I stripped off the duvet, put my slippers on. Clack, clack, clack. The sound came again, metal. Hard, like an axe against the TV stand, calling me out. I stepped over the floorboards that creaked, made it to the door and squatted against it. I heard him drop something on the laminate and spin around in gritted boots to pick it up. Then nothing again. Then clack, clack, clack. I wished I had a gun. If I had a gun, it wouldn't matter who was in there. What weapon they had. Bang! If I had a gun, everybody would be sorry. Unless he had a gun. Clack, clack, clack. Squatting nude, the brown light in the bedroom made me look like a madman in the full-length mirror on the wardrobe door. He'd opened a window in there too, my nipples clenched at the cold, so I reached up and took my dressing gown from the hook above me, pulled it on. Now I look less mad. Clack, clack, clack. And it occurred to me that maybe that wasn't the impression I wanted to give. What if he was mad? Breaking into a home with the resident, napping in sight, calling him out by bashing an axe against the furniture, it all suggested some degree of instability. I had to meet him on his own terms. I could be a violent nut for all he knew. Right, you little fucker. And even madmen are wary of violent nuts. When they promoted Jim Stant over me, Sarah said, You spineless Marco. When Stant started laying people off and made me go first, she said, You don't care enough about it. You're spineless with them. That's the problem. It's always been the problem. I was shaking. W with rage, maybe. A, a violent nut. I scowled in the mirror, gaunt, sweating in the cold. A madman, at least. I'd show the fucker my spine. I'd swing it like a nine-eye and smash his fucking teeth with it. And what if he did have a gun? Did he think he could stop me? I listened for his movements. Slow, confident footsteps. Oblivious, uncaring. I'd make him care. I'd kill him. I'd kill him and then I'd turn things around with Sarah and with everything else, put the train back on the rails. Clack, clack, clack. The air was damp and my lungs couldn't handle the full breath, so I didn't breathe. I straightened up against the door and the adrenaline hit my shins too, so everything trembled. But I was ready. I had a spine. Clack, clack, clack. I tore through the door and into him. Crouched in the corner with a hammer, pulling wires through the skirting boards. My skirting boards. My road blew open and the wind he'd let in, but I didn't care. He twisted around, looked at me in the nose of my shoulder, but the doorway was mine. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry to, wait, to you, wait you, he said. Should I should be, be done, done in a minute or two, he said. I'd show him. I put my hand on his collar and pulled him tight and he just smiled at me. Smiled at me like I was some fool, Jesus. I hit him ah. in a smile he went down and dropped the hammer. And I picked him up and hit him again. Fuck her. He came at me like I always knew he would. Big, bald and arrogant as hell, but I was the madman. It struck me that there was something familiar about his face, but there wasn't time to ask. His hands came at me like to gouge my eyes and I buried a slipper in his no, stomach no. before he got the chance. I was quick, powerful. He reached for the hammer, but I was too fast across the floor, and then it was in my hand. He tried to reason with me next, Just let me go. crawling backwards towards the clothes horse in the opposite corner around the settee, Jesus but Christ. the blood in his mouth gargled his words, and I wasn't listening anyway. There was nothing to be said. I looked at the hammer and back to him. You think I'm spineless? spineless? I said, bang the hammer against the radiator behind me. Clang, clang, clang. You, you think, think I, I won't, won't do, do it? it? I said, clang, 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 and then crack. As the King Magpie from Number 20's Conquer Tree flew at full speed into the open window pane and flopped down two floors into the downstairs garden. Seeing his opportunity, the fucker lifted himself up against the wall and launched it with my own clothes off. Clothes that had been hanging for weeks, underwear which seemed inexplicably still to be moist. It forced a barrier enough between us to let him stumble down the stairs and through the front door. I didn't chase him. I went to the bedroom and watched him run. Hunched over and coughing and spitting and I watched him jump into a van which backfired as it scraped down the centre of the road and around the corner. Down in the back garden, the ginger stray sat in the pushchair and looked quizzically at its tail, ignorant of the new chew toy hidden in the long grass in front of it. The magpie twitched its wings and wondered where it had all gone wrong. I closed the window and wondered the same thing.